Blessed be the name of the Lord. Good morning, everyone listening to me again this morning. Thank you for joining Reign of Mercy. The Lord bless you. May you experience the reign of mercy in every aspect and areas of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. May the showers of blessing, may the showers of favor, may the showers of peace of God come upon you wherever you are hearing the sound of my voice again this morning in the name of Jesus. I want you to quickly invite your friends. I want you to invite your neighbors. I want you to invite people to join us on this platform. I want you to share. 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 I want you to keep sharing because in sharing, it's a sign that you are spreading the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as you are spreading the gospel, I believe there is a reward for those who spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You also will receive that reward in the mighty name of Jesus. Your sharing will not be a wasted time in Jesus' name. I also want to thank God for the life of people that always share this program, always share it. I want to thank God for them. The Lord bless you. The Lord increase you on every side. The Lord favor you in the name of Jesus. To our amazing worship team and our media team, we say bless God for your life. The Lord bless you. The Lord uphold you to the hand. The Lord season your tongue. The Lord grant you wisdom to do great exploits in the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus. We want you to know that we love you and we appreciate you. To everyone joining us again, we want to tell you that we love you and we appreciate you. I'm waiting for your testimony. I'm waiting for you to text. I'm waiting for you to share. Uh, we're going to dedicate one day for a testimony. I believe maybe towards the end of the month, I'll let you know. Praise the Lord, but make sure those testimony you are sending them in. Praise God. Let's bow our head for prayer. It's rain of mercy again this hour. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for rain of mercy in the month of February. Thank you for your rain. Thank you, Lord, for raining where there is drought in our life. Thank you, Lord, for your favor. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your amazing grace. Uh, we surpass this everything. We give you praise, oh God. Thank you for saving us. Thank you, Jesus, for your blessing upon us. Thank you for grace that you have given to us and our ministry to minister the word of God. Father, we give you praise. Father, we worship you. Thank you because at the mention of the name of Jesus, every nail shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for everyone connecting again this hour. Thank you because you will reach out to them. You will bless them. You will favor them and you will grant them desires of their heart. In the name of Jesus, we give you all the praise, precious Holy Spirit. We ask that you will lead as we will follow you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of the Lord. Praise, praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Yesterday, I started a topic, which is God is able. I did part one. I said, my God is able, uh, which is, I was talking about bragging about God bragging about God. And I say there are seasons of our life that we just come into the presence of God and all you want to do is just brag about God. You just talk, you just keep bragging about your God. And uh, we were able to look at the book of Ephesians 3 and verse 20 yesterday. And, uh, and that scripture we find out that God is able to do abundantly that what we think or we can imagine according to the power that reside in us. Our God is bigger than any face of life that you are now. Our God is bigger than whatsoever you are experiencing. Our God is bigger than whatever it is that you know is coming your way. I want you to look at it and also declare to it that my God is bigger. And at times you need to do that. It's also a statement of faith. It's an act of faith that believers at, the, at every time we need to do that because that help you in your faith journey. You remember that this time we are making sure that we do more of the word of faith because we are in a time and we are in a season where we find that people no longer want to wait. The faith of people are becoming weak and weak and weak every day. And the only thing you can do is to increase in faith. So in this season and time that we are, we'll be able to stand the test of time. And I pray that God will grant you that grace to stand the test of time again this morning in Jesus' name. So I'll be doing the part two of brag about God. 
And I thank God, I want to believe that some of you have been bragging about your God. When you brag about your God, you are saying to whatever issues of life that you are going through, that if God has done it before, he can do it again. Because you know for sure that his day is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Praise the Lord. Brag about God. When you brag about God, it means you are boastful of what God has done. Don't quit praying because God is able. Don't get to the place that you get discouraged. God is able. God is able. One way to deal with the issues that, uh, of your life is to keep telling the devil that God is able. Is to keep telling the issue that God is able. Deal with the impossible. <laughs> Dealing with the impossible is to reassure yourself that God is able. Let me say that again. Dealing with the impossible is to reassure yourself that God is able. So one of the ways to deal with the impossible, you look straight in the eyes of the situation and you say it again and again that my God is able. I don't have any other God but you. So I know God is able to this task. I know God is going to do it. And I know that in this season, I can testify that a lot of us, we are growing because the word of God that is coming to us is growing our spiritual muscles and it's helping us to get stronger and stronger on a daily basis. So get connected to God to see the ability uh, uh, in a difficult, to see God's ability in difficult situation. What did I say? I said, get connected to God to see God's ability in difficult situation. So what you can do is to keep staying the statement of faith. You keep repeating the statement of faith. You may not know a spiritual verse per se that you want to use, but you know, you just say, I know God is able, and that is just enough for you. Because you are boasting in the Lord, you are saying, I may not know the scripture verse. Remember, I shared a woman with you that was going through a, a lot. They were about to deport the son. And all she could do, because she couldn't read, she couldn't write. And she said that my pastor, we always say that uh, I'm standing on the word of God. She did not know the scripture verse was to open for that situation. And I shared with you that what she did was to bring out a Bible and she stood on it and she started saying that <laughs> my pastor said the word and that word was able to deliver even without the speech of us. I'm not saying that you should be a, a lazy Christian, that you will not know the word of God and have the word of God in, in your heart. But I'm just saying to you that you need a statement of faith on a daily basis to go on in the journey of life. Let me say that again. Each and every one of you, you need a statement of faith. We are in a time that things are happening. We are in a time that there's a lot of shaking. We are in a time that we need to encourage ourselves in the Lord. And uh, one of the ways to say it or to do it is to say a statement of faith for you to confess what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of 1 Samuel 17. And I'll be reading from 34 to 37. I want to repeat that again. 1 Samuel 17, 34 to 37. Praise God, somebody. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep the sheep of his father. And when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of the mouth. And if he arose against me, I caught him by his bear and struck him and killed him. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears, and, is on, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, for he has defiled the armies of the living God. And David said, the Lord who deliver me from the paws of the lion, mark that, that is powerful. The Lord who deliver me from the paws of the lion and from the paws of the bear, will deliver me from the ends of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. What a powerful scripture. You see, there's no time I open this scripture that I don't have a message to preach on it. And I believe as you are listening to it as well, there's something that must have dropped in your heart as you are hearing the sound of my voice. He said, your servant, your servant, how do you brag about God? Let's just talk about that. One of the ways to brag about God is you look at what God has done in the past. It's either your testimony or the testimony of somebody that you have listened to and their powerful testimony. Do you know that in life, 
their certain testimony. It may be 20 years ago, it may be 15 years ago, but every time you listen to it, or every time you remember it, I don't know about you, they are fresh testimony that you want to keep forever. There is something that wants to keep coming into your life. So one of the ways for you to brag about God, you are not just talking, but you look at what God has done for you in the past. And I want to believe that some of you that is hearing the sound of my voice right now, you must have something that God has done for you. And if he has not done anything for you, maybe it's not something tangible. And maybe you can say it's not tangible. We are not just talking about the bread of life, but we are talking about certain things that you, you, you stood in awe of God because you look back and you say, wow, this can only be God because this is no longer your strength. This is no longer your power. Do you know, David was making a, uh, made, uh, he made a reference point to what God has done when he was alone. When he's alone with the sheep and, uh, and was pastoring the flock of his father. And this is a situation that Israel was faced with. So all he could say, all he could say was to say to Saul, he said, you know what? This, I have similar experience. In the past, the, the bears and the lion, every time I passed on my father's flock, they find out that they come for some of these sheep and they caught the sheep. But God was able to deliver the sheep from the mouth of the lion from my hand. Recently, I was watching a channel and it's got to do with uh, uh, talking about animals. And I, I, I saw the way, you know, uh, the cheetah was able to, uh, you know, they caught a lot of birds. They will hide in the holes where the birds are so close. Um, and uh, suddenly the cheetahs will come against this bird and the birds will fly. But we find out that some of them could not fly before. You know, the cheetahs can run very well. They just, they cut those birds and they hold their neck. And David is saying here, and as I was looking at that um, channel and I said, wow, what came to my mind was this spiritual verse. And I began to imagine how David was able to do that. I saw the way the cheetah was able to uh, take one of the birds and he held it in his, you know, with his mouth. And it's like, nobody can take this. And he was holding it right in the neck. But David was saying in this scripture, he said, I delivered them out of the mouth of the lions and the bear. Not only that, not this. He said, when they want to attack me personally, I did something again. I was able to, uh, to struck them. I was able to struck the lion and the bears, both the lions and the bear. Then he said, who is this man? You see, what David was doing in that place was bragging. He was bragging about God. Is that if I'm there alone and God was able to do that through me, that same God is still alive. That same God is not dead. That same God is with me. That same God, who is this uncircumcised Philistines that will challenge the God of Israel? Did you see that? There is a lot we can learn from the scripture when we are faced with a lot of things in life. But many times when we are faced with a lot of things, we panic. When we are faced with a lot of things in life, we are afraid. When we are faced with a lot of things in life, we get troubled, we, got, we get worried, and we are not able to do certain things because our heart is loaded. But hear me and hear me very well. When, you are, when your heart is filled with a lot of things, when the devil wants to suppress your testimony, when the devil wants to suppress you, when the devil wants to make you feel that you are alone and God is not with you, all you need to do is for you to rise up in your spirit. Can I say this? Do you know that many times of troubles of life, you don't even feel like eating? Have you been there? I've been there, so I understand what I'm talking about. You are not fasting, but you don't feel for food. You just feel that, no, I'm not hungry. It's difficult for you to pray at that time. And that is why it's good for you in the time that you are praying. I've said this before. You are only storing that prayer. It's like you're putting money in the bank. You may not need certain prayers that you are praying now, but it's waiting for you at the longer run. And the time you need it, it would be easy for you to withdraw those prayers and use it. 
because you have already gone ahead of the devil. So what am I saying this morning? You see, when your heart, are, when your heart is troubled, when it looks as if you are not stable, all you need to do, go into your archive and begin to remember some of the things that God has done in the past and begin to put him in remembrance of his word and stand on that word and begin to confess that my God is able to see me through again. My God is able. And this was exactly the statement that David was making, that that God is able to deliver me from the hands of this Goliath. Why are you guys afraid of this Goliath? And it's the same thing with you. Wherever you are hearing me from today, I don't know the Goliath that you are faced with. I don't know what is in your face right now and is staring at you. I don't know the issues of life. I don't know the problem of life. I don't know the pain that you are going through. I don't know the difficulty that you are in. I don't know how heavy that your heart is, but I've come as a servant of the living God, again, to encourage you. What you need to do in times like this is to begin to look at what God has done in the past and stand on what God has done in the past. That if he has done it before, uh -huh, he has the power to do it again. And what you are saying, why you are saying that, you are saying God is able. If you are also saying, you are also re referring to the faithfulness of God. What did I say? To the faithfulness of God. Remember the scripture said, he who has promised is faithful. What did I say? He who has promised is faithful and he will do it again. What did I say? He who has promised is faithful and he will do it again. And that is the God that we are serving. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. I, I received a test. I believe it was last week. And uh, one of the sisters is the pastor as well. And he shared with me and he said, pastor, pray. I want you to pray on this issue. And I said, okay, I didn't have to go too much and be, no, and all I have to say, I said, God is able and God is going to deliver that person. Three days later, he called back and said, God has done it again. That's what God can do. Hear this and hear me very well. It is not every time that you'll be able to pray. And this is why you pray now so that you don't pray. What did I say? You pray now because at times when you are going through certain things, your mind is so troubled and you are not able to pray. But at that time, this are the season when you'll be able to stand as a child of God and you'll be able to declare that my God is able. Do you know what you makes you to say God is able? Because you have looked in the archive that you have. You have looked at the things that God has done in the past. Maybe it's through your children. Maybe it's in your life of your husband. Maybe there's a situation that it feels that ah, this is an ugly situation and God was able to deliver you from it. Maybe it's something that's really suppressed you. Maybe it's something that you don't even know how it came into your life. And all you need to do as a child of God, just make reference to what God has done before. And if he has not done anything for you, no problem. There are testimonies of people that you hear. There are things that you hear that Lord, God has done for A, God has done for B, God has done for E. All you need to do, make references to that and stand in, 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 in faith and say it again, that my God that have done it for that sister, that God that have done it for this sister, that God that has done it for that mother, for that father, it will also do it for me as a child of God. Do you know this is what David used? And God was able to back David up. God backed David up. David did not say, I was going to pray. Because at that time, there was no time to pray. Are you getting what I'm saying? As at that time, no time to pray. It's a time for action. Listen to me. Every one of us in life, we have a time of action. At our time of action, there's no, you can't pray in your time of action. You just act based on what you know. And what happened in the life of David? David acted based on what he knew. He knew that, hey, I've been alone when there's nobody. I've been alone in the wilderness. I've been alone, you know, pastoring the flocks of my father. I've been alone with this sheep many times. And I've seen, and all I have seen, God is able to deliver me through all those, through all those problems, through those, all those issues, in the hands of the bears and the lion. Hey, who dares the bear? Who dares the lion? But I want to believe that this great young man knew that there is somebody inside of him that is greater. Do you know how old David was at that time? David was only 17 years old. 
what did I say? He was only 17 years old. If a 17 year old now will say something like that, I believe the mother will want to shut him down. We want to say, who are you to say that? I don't want you to go. I don't want you to do this. At times we don't allow our children to do exploit. At times we kill dreams inside of them. At times there are certain things that these children want to go uh, and do. We don't allow them to reach out to it because we feel, no, 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 no. I don't want you to do it. I don't want you to do it. Praise the Lord. But what you need to do with the scriptures that you are hearing and the word of God that you are hearing, I want to believe that the giant inside of you is being developed to rise and to roar. Did you just hear that? The giant inside of you is developed to roar. Hallelujah. The giant inside of me is developed to roar. And this is why the word of God comes to you in order to strengthen your spiritual muscle so you can stand the test of time. Somebody shout hallelujah. We are talking about God is able part two. Praise God. So whatever you are going through right now, I stand in agreement with you. And I speak to those situations. Every stump of your life to be still. Every stump in your home to be still. Every stump in your career to be still. Every stump, every stump in your business to be still. Every stump that the, ne the, the devil is raging at this time. We join faith together and we command it to be still in the name of Jesus. I command that stump, that financial stump, to be still in the name of Jesus. I command every issue of your life. The same God that deliver, the, the, that deliver in the ends of David, that deliver Israel, that same God is backing you up now. I said that same God is backing you up now. I said that same God is delivering you right now. Somebody shout a better, bigger, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's look at the book of Romans 4 and verse 21. Romans 4 and verse 21. Write these scriptures down. Always go back to it and put it in your heart because it will help you. Hallelujah. It says, fully convinced. Did you see that? Fully convinced that God was able to do what he has promised. My God. That's another one. This is Abraham they are referring to here. He was fully convinced. There was no shaking. He was fully convinced that God is able to do what he has promised. My brothers and sisters, again this morning, we must get to the place in life where we are fully convinced about God. Can I say this to you? A lot of believers are not convinced about the word of God. A lot of be believers, they, believe, they see the word of God as true, but they don't believe it. Can I say that again? They see it as true, but they don't believe it. So in time of need, they are shaking. In time of need, they are not stable. In time of need, they can say it, but it's not from their heart. There is no how you will believe the word of God that you will not be fully convinced about it. So there is nothing that comes your way. You are standing on the word of God because you are fully convinced that God is able to do that which he has promised. What is it that God has promised you again this morning? What is it that God has promised you this year? What is it that God has said to you? Do you have the word in your heart? I want to believe with this platform, God is going to de de deliver you. With this platform, God is going to increase your faith. With this platform, you'll be able to do exploit in the kingdom of God. Abraham was fully convinced. Abraham did not consider his own body as weak. When you are saying to a man that is a 90 year old, and you are saying to that man, you will still give back to a child. You will still give back to a child. And the man is fully convinced. The man believed God. That he that has promised, that is faithful, that he that has promised will not change his mind. I say it every time. If God has promised you anything, it may not be a word of rema that you have received. It may be a locust that you are holding on to. But let me say this. If it's the promises of God that you find in the word of God, it's yea and amen. Because it's God himself. God is his word. Jesus is his word. And it's the will of God for you as a child of God to have every promises. That is promised in the scripture as a child of God. Hallelujah. Look at this again. Abraham was not thinking about his physical strength or feeling. He wasn't thinking about the physical strength. He was not also thinking about the wife to say she's not also doing menstruation again. He believed. He believed. He believed. This year, I want you to write down things that you are believing God for. As you come on this platform, I want you to begin to put it before God. As you come to the place of prayer, I want you to begin to say it. 
I want you to look for scripture. I want you to add it to your vision book. I want you to say it again and again. The Bible makes us to understand that he did not consider his own body. He was fully convinced that God that has promised that that God is able to perform what he has said. What are you doing right now? Are you still doubting God? Are you saying every time that I don't know when this is going to come? I don't know even God is going to do it. I don't know if God will answer my prayer. I don't know what God is doing. Is God really coming? Is God really coming? This scripture makes us to understand that Abraham did not consider it for one minute. He did not, he did not lose hope for one minute. He, 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 he did not lose hope. He did not give up. He held on to the promise of God. He was fully convinced that God is faithful. Are you fully convinced that God is faithful? Are you fully convinced that God is faithful? Are you fully convinced that God is going to do that which he has promised you? Are you fully confused that no weapon from against you shall prosper? Are you fully convinced that you will not die but live to give testimony to the glory of God? Are you fully convinced that none shall lack their meat? Are you fully convinced that your children will surround your table? Are you fully convinced that the word of God says he will satisfy you with long life? Aha, he will satisfy you with long life. Are you fully convinced that God wants you to prosper above all? Are you fully convinced that you are part of the above family? Are you fully convinced that you cannot serve God in vain? Are you fully convinced that faithful is he that has promised concerning your life? Do you, are you really convinced? Are you convinced? Are you convinced that by his strife, you are healed by his strife? I want to believe that from now, a lot of you will begin to receive your healing, not by magic, but by faith. Did you just hear me? Once you have prayed for it, the last thing you need to do is to be thankful for it because it's something that is already paid for. And you know that God is able to heal you. So you are declaring that my God is able to do this. And you are saying it. And not that you are just saying it. You also believe it. As you believe it, you find that, that things begin to change. You find out that God begins to do what you cannot do. It's my prayer today in the name of Jesus that every doubt is cast out by the finger of God and your faith begins to increase as you are hearing the word of God on a daily basis. I pray for you that your faith will increase. I pray for you. Do you know there was a day that Jesus was with the disciples and they were in the boat and there was storm. It was so stormy and Jesus was, you know, Jesus was sleeping. He didn't even know that there was storm. And what happened? The disciples shouted and said, Jesus, Jesus, don't you care that we perish? And Jesus just looked at the storm and he said, be still. Uh -huh. Because, listen to me, Jesus knew that while he's in the boat, the boat cannot capsize. He knew, he knew who he was uh, at the time when he came in the flesh. He knew, so he's not, he just spoke to the storm, be still, because he knew that God is able. He knew that God is with him. He knew that he's not alone. He knew that God listens to him. Listen to me, children of God, you must get to a place when you are declaring something and you know for sure that what you have said, you have said it, everything can still be, but there can still be a raging, there can still be a storm, it can still be storming, but you just know, I have said it, I have declared it, what I declare is what I'm going to see. What are you saying at that time? You are saying God is able. You see, the way, uh, the way uh, David, Daniel, uh, sorry, the way David boasts about God, do you know at the end of the day exactly? He said, who is this man to defy the God of Israel? What was he doing? He was boasting about God. So look at your situation. Aha. Even when you are not on prayer line, instead of you from jumping, 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 look at your situation and begin to speak to it and begin to say, this, all, this will hand the gain. This is a small do. I know that my God is able. I know when the devil launch an attack with you, it's like somebody said, when the devil tried to throw you lemon, he said you should turn it into lemonade and enjoy it. So when the tri devil tried to throw stones into your life, and <laughs> you know the devil does not go to an empty warehouse. He goes to a warehouse where it's loaded. He knows that, yes, it's, it's loaded. So he will try as much as possible to rock it, to spoil it, to steal. But here, you will boast in the Lord when you look at the situation and you say nothing to steal here. And you are standing your ground. As you are saying it, everyone is responding. Do you know 
until you speak, heaven cannot respond. You stood and you are saying, hey, it will pass away. This again will pass away to the glory of the name of the Lord. You are saying it and you are, you are, you are bragging. I know God because my God cannot forsake me. I know God because my God cannot leave me. And you are speaking that way as a child of God. Not that temptation will not come my way. Not, not that discouragement will not come my way. Some of you, even when you wake up this morning, you were filled with a lot of discouragement. There are things that you see around you that cause you to be discouraged. But hear me and hear him very much. In as much as we are still here on this earth, there will be discouragement. There will be pain. There will be trouble. But hear me what the word of God says. He said, I have conquered, I have conquered the world. Not that I will conquer the world. So when you look at obstacles of life, when you look at troubles of life, when you look at certain things that is happening to you, all you do is just look at it and you just say like David, who is this uncircumcised devil? Who is this power of get affair that is trying to push into what, what belongs to you? And you stand your ground. And as you stand your ground, everyone begin to respond to what you have declared here on earth. You begin to see changes that you least expected. I believe with the word of God that you are hearing on a daily basis, you will grow in the name of Jesus. Let's look at the book of Hebrews 3 and verse 1 quickly. I love it when we establish what we are saying by the scripture. And I know that this word is rooted, is getting root in your heart. It's getting root in your heart. Hebrews 3 and verse 1. It said, therefore, did you hear that? Therefore, holy brothers, you who shared in the heavenly calling, consider Jesus the apostle and the high priest of our confession. High priest of our confession. I want you to note that. The high priest of our confession. The high priest of our confession. Let me just break down for you. That's what that means. You see, every time you are saying God is able, you are doing what? You are confessing what Jesus, our high priest, has done for us on the cross of Calvary. Can I go through that again so that you understand what I've just said? I said, any time you say God is able, any time you make a statement of faith, what this scripture is saying, you are confessing what the high priest has done for you. What our high priest, and Jesus happened to be our high priest. I can read it again for you so that you get a deeper understanding. It said, therefore, holy brother, you are to share in the heavenly calling. Consider Jesus, the apostle, and the high priest of our confession. So anytime you are confessing, God is able. Anytime you are confessing, by his stripe, I am here. Anytime you are confessing, all you are saying is you are repeating what Jesus has done for you on the cross of Calvary. And you are saying, I have a right to it. Yes, I have a right to it. Yes, I have a right to heal it. I have a right to deliver us. I have a right to, uh, to, for God to guide me. I have a right to wealth. I have a right to possess my possession. I have a right for my deliverance. That's what we are, you are confessing as a statement of faith, because your high priest, your apostle, he said, consider what he has done for you. And Jesus died for you on the cross of Calvary. He took your place on the cross of Calvary. He did what? He took your place. He took those stripes, he took those latches that you are meant to take as a child of God. 39 latches. He didn't take it for himself. He took it because of you. Because he did not need any healing. He did not need any deliverance. Because God was with him. And because God was with him, God was able to deliver him through what he's going through. But he did it for you. What did I say? He did it for you. So that you can enjoy today. So that you can enjoy the blessing of today. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. So anytime you are making this confession, you are always, you are also reminding God what Jesus has done for you on the cross of Calvary. Anytime you make confession of your healing, anytime you make confession of your deliverance, anytime you make confession for anything that is in the promises of God, what are you saying? You are reminding the Father that Jesus has paid the price for you and you have the right to have it because Jesus has already paid the price. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Praise God somebody. Let's quickly look at the book of Hebrew again. This Hebrew, I told you that Hebrew is the book of faith. So on your study time, just go and sit down with the book of Hebrew. There is a lot that you'll be able to learn in the book of Hebrew. Let's look at the book of Hebrew 12 again and verse 2. I repeat that again. Hebrew 12 and verse 2, and I read, 
looking to Jesus, the founder, the perfecter of our faith. Another scripture verse we say the founder and the author, the author and the finisher of our faith. But this scripture, yes, this verse I'm reading said, looking to Jesus, the founder, the perfecter of our faith. You see, when you release your faith, when you release your faith to get anything, you know, what Jesus has done is what perfects that for you to receive it. Did you catch that? That's what this scripture is saying. Anytime you receive your faith to receive and release your faith, to receive anything that is in the promise of God, anything that is in the scripture, Jesus has already perfected everything that you needed as a child of God. Hallelujah. He said, for who, whom for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Jesus endured the cross for your sake. He endured the cross for your sake, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus despised the shame. He is seated at the right hand of the uh, throne of God. What is he doing at the right hand of the, the throne of God? To, to intercede for us as believers. To, to intercede for us as what? As believers. To intercede for us as what? As the believer. Jesus has done all that you need. And every time you are believing God and you are acting in faith, every time he's showing to God, this is the receipt. I have paid for them. I have paid for them. I have paid for them. The author and the finisher of your faith has paid for everything that you need to have as a child of God. Everything means everything. So all you need to do is to keep focusing on what Jesus has done for you on the cross of Calvary. Stop focusing on the problem. Stop focusing on the issue. Stop focusing on the pain. Focus on what Jesus has done for you. Take your eyes completely off. What did I say? Take your eyes completely off what you see now. Take your eyes. You can say to me, Pastor, how can that be possible? How ah, you don't understand. I you don't know what I'm going through. It's so much. I'm even tired. I don't know how to go. Take your eyes off it. It's because you are fixing your eyes on it. Let me say this to you. Do you know that the devil has a magnifying glass? Can I say that again? The devil has a magnifying glass every time you are worried, every time you are troubled, it brings out the magnifying glass. And he look at the problem and it becomes big and it becomes big and it will be expanding it and enlarging it and telling you that, ah, you know, it's big old. This is what's going to be the consequence. This is what is going to be there. And if care is not taken, you carry that in your hand and you block God from walking because God cannot walk without faith. The scripture makes us to understand that it is impossible to please God without faith. That's the book of Hebrew 11, number six. He said, it's impossible to please God without faith. And so when, when symptoms, let me use another thing. You are prayed by stripe, I am healed. And you are still feeling the back pain. You are still feeling it. It's not in feeling. It's you taking your eyes off the feeling. It's you taking your eyes off the symptoms. It's you fixing your eye. You say, Pastor, it's so difficult for me. And let me say this. It is not possible for you to be looking, God, looking at God and at the same time looking at your pain. It's not possible. So you have to choose. And you have the power to make that choice. I have the power to make that choice. When you want some changes in the life of your husband, you have to take your eyes off his mistake and focus on Jesus and also focus on yourself. Am I talking to you? Because most of the time, we focus on things that is not our business. And we forget that we don't have the power to turn some things around. You and I don't have the power to turn things around. It's only one person that has the power to turn things around. And I see the Lord, as I'm speaking, turning situation in your life around for good. I say he's turning those situations around you for good. I say he's turning those situations around you for good. So all you need to do is see beyond your pain. Let me say this. The more you see your pain, the more you engross with it. What did I say? The more you see your pain, the more you engross with it. So which one do you want to choose? Do you want to choose leaving your pain behind and trusting God and walking in faith and walking in faith and fixing your eyes 
on the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, when you start the journey of faith, at first it will see it looks as if it's not balanced. Because you'll be thinking, I have faith. No, you don't have it. There's no how you don't have you have faith that your faith will not work for you. Because we have been given what will work for us in the kingdom, and that is faith. When you have this faith, you are convinced. And that's why the scripture says that Abraham was fully convinced. He was not ready to take any alternative. He was ready for what God is about to do. He was watching. He was waiting. He was trusting. He was believing. He knew that God who has promised is faithful. Do you know, even when he wanted to digress, at the point in time he was saying to God, he said, God, you know what? I'm contented. I'm satisfied. Don't worry. You have been promises. You have been given promises and promises. I'm, I'm saying it in my own word. He said, you know what? I have a maid in my own house. And that is the eldest of my maid. It's as good as a son. And don't worry. I, because according to the culture of the day then, they can make their hair. They can make their snake and hair, depending on what you want. And Abraham said, listen, I'm contented. I'm satisfied. This one, God said, no. My promises. At that point, God knew that the faith of Abraham was shaken. And God has to help Abraham quickly. You must have heard me saying this. And God said to Abraham, come, 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 come here. Come from where you are seated. I want you to come here. And God said, I'm going to give you an assignment now. Because now your faith is beginning to dwindle. And he said, this is what I'm going to do. He said, look at the star. And begin to count the star. And Abraham fixed his eyes on the star. And he was busy counting. In order to take his eyes off his problem, to fix his eyes on God. Praise the Lord, somebody. And this is what we need to do as children of God. We must get to the point you take your eyes off. Yes, it's difficult, but it's possible. Because I find out in the scripture that there is nothing that is difficult that we are given to do. That God has not made provision for us to be able to do it or to be able to go through it. Praise the Lord somebody. Wherever you are hearing me from again this afternoon, I want you to lift up your voice. We are faith family. Ha, we are prayer church. I want you to lift up your voice. And begin to thank God because he's able. He's able. Go ahead, begin to thank God. I want you to begin to declare that my God is able. He's able to cause you to conceive. He's able to lead you to whatever you are believing for. He's able to deliver you. He's able to rescue you from that trouble. He's able to stop that stumble. Your God is able. I want you to go ahead. Your God is able. I say your God is able. I said, your God is able. Just go ahead and begin to declare my God is able. I want you to go ahead and begin to declare my God is able. I want you to go ahead and begin to declare my God is able. I want you to say it again. I want you to say it again. I want you to say it again. My God is able. My God is able. I want you to go ahead. What are those difficult situations that you are still struggling with? I want you to know that God is able. I want you to know that God is able. I want you to go ahead and begin to declare that God is able. 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 I want you to go ahead and declare that. That my God is able. I want you to declare that my God is able. I say I brown them little being delivered to somebody. And it's got to do with your papers. I saw a brown my little, but we start that prayer. Our God is able. I want you to lift up your voice and begin to declare right now. I say I break every limit. I want you to go ahead. I want you to go ahead. Say I break every limit. Place over my life. Place over my children. Place over my ministry. Place over her. Place over my career. I want you to go ahead in the place of prayer and begin to declare. Say, I break every limit. I break every limit. I break every limit. I want you to go ahead. I don't know what has been limiting you, but the time has come for you to be free. The time has come for you to be free. I want you to press on, and I want you to cry out to God. Say, I break every limit. I break every limit. I break every limit. I break every limit. I want you to go ahead. I want you to go ahead. I want you to go ahead. I want you to lift up your voice and begin to say it. I want you to say it. I want you to say it. Rema sundali brogagabo shigalaba. I want you to cry out to God that I break every limit. Physical limit, spiritual limit, mental limit, emotional limit, financial limit. I want you to go on. I want you to decree and declare. I break every limit. Whatever is the limit that is limiting my life. 
Oh Lord, today I break that limit. 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 I want you to say that. I want you to say that. In Nano, she Daraba, Huria Basica Libroga, Regabasu Galabaganende, Limocoto Libroga, a Libroga de Boshigala, a Nando Libra Haka Libo Shiga Libraga. Hi, by the power in the name of Jesus, every limit placed over your life today is broken. Every limit placed over the work of your hand, I said is broken. I said is broken. I said is broken. I pray for you, that couple watching me right now. Every limit placed over your life, every limit placed over your life is broken today. It's 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 broken today. By the power of the blood. Inano sukali bragada, regama mo sukali bragande libo galiba, regama sukali bragada, regada ro sukala baga, le bragada. That couple I'm speaking about right now. Put your hands on your head. Put your hands on your head. You are watching me as I'm speaking. Magalo sugali braga, negene magalo sugala ba. By the power of the blood of Jesus. Every limit placed over your life, every limit placed over your achievement, every limit placed over you in the back of Talibro Gagaro Shiga, Neganama Kutuli Braga, in the Lebagaro Sugalaba, I release the power of the blood to break that limit, to break that limit, to break that limit, to break that limit in the name of Jesus. That limit today is removed, that limit today is destroyed, that limit today is shattered. In the next two months, we are coming back to testify to the goodness of God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Wherever you are hearing me, I want you to declare, I shut every door opened by the enemy in my life. Say, I shut every door. I shut every door. Physical door, spiritual door, say, I shut it. Say, I shut it. Door of waste. Say, I shut it. I see someone, as I'm speaking, you waste a lot. You waste a lot. You don't know. Once you just have money, you just waste it. And we're not doing any tangible thing with it. I come as an authority of the Lord uh, in the name of Jesus. The spirit that is attacking your life, the spirit that is attacking the work of your hand, the spirit that is attacking your finances, by the power of the blood of Jesus, I release the blood of Jesus. I release the blood of Jesus. I release the blood of Jesus. Every spirit attacking the work of your hand, by the power of the blood, I release you from me today. 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 I'm speaking to another man, every strange man, every strange woman in your life. By the power of the blood of Jesus, I cut them up. 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 In the name of Jesus, I cut them up. In the name of Jesus, I'm speaking to somebody. There's someone that needs to remind, to remember you. He has promised. He has promised you three times, so that you know that it's you I'm talking about today. In the name of Jesus, I open the book of remembrance. That which He said He's going to do, He will do it. Come back and testify. In the name of Jesus, come back and testify. In the name of Jesus, I say, come back and testify. In the name of Jesus, I say, come back and testify. In the name of Jesus, there's somebody else I'm speaking. There is an issue in your life. It has to do with court case. Today, in the name of Jesus, the Lord give you victory. I stand in the name of Jesus and I speak over your life. Receive victory. 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 Receive victory in the name of Jesus. I release the spirit of victory upon you by the power of the blood and the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, we give you praise. I want you to lift up your voice wherever you are and begin to ask for something tangible that you want God to do for you. Begin to ask for God to do something in your life. Begin to ask him, begin to ask him, begin to ask him, begin to ask him, begin to ask him. Rima I see the angel that come with your, with, your, with your answer. So go ahead, go ahead. Begin to ask God 
to whatever you need right now. Begin to ask God to whatever you need right now. This mountain must be removed. I want you to go ahead. This mountain must be removed. 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 I want you to go ahead. 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 Hallelujah. Lord, I give you praise. Magarusu gala bagarusa. Enderika bo sugala. Elibra gala bo shegele baga. Kandeli gele bo sugala ba. I pray for you today. By the power of the blood and the name of Jesus. Nekarusu kalia. Let the blessing of God come upon you. Let the grace of God come upon you. Let the healing power of God flow through you. Let the anointing of favor be your portion. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, Rima Sukali Brogada, Regedebosha, and Nakuria Basikeli Brogaga, Regedebo Sugadabada, and the Regedebosha from today become a living testimony. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. From this minute, from this second, become a living testimony. A living testimony. A living testimony. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I hear somebody, you have been saying, my skill is not enough. Father, show me what you want me to do. Show me what you want me to do. The Lord said he has put something in your heart and you are still doubting it. You are saying, maybe I should do it. Maybe I should not do it. The Lord asked me to tell you to go ahead this morning. Say, go ahead and do it. You have been saying, my skill, my skill is not enough. I want something extra. I want something extra. And the Lord is saying there's something that kept coming to your mind again and again and again. But you are still waiting for another answer. He said, yes, that's what he wants you to do. He said, go ahead, wrong with it. Wrong with it, wrong with it. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Father, we worship you. Father, we exalt you. Father, we adore you. Father, we glorify you. Father, we magnify you. You are God that specializes in possibility. You are God that can do it in and abundantly than that which we feel or think. Have your way, 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 have your way. Lion of Judah, have your way. Headless God, have your way. The bride of Monistar, have your way. The king of all kings, have your way. Have your way, have your way. I release the grace and anointing of God upon you. I esteem what God is doing in your life. That you bring it to completion and to manifestation in the name of Jesus. Every blessing that has been pronounced over you, I command it to manifest from today. Manifest your healing, manifest your breakthrough, manifest your favor, manifest your next level, manifest in the name of Jesus. 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 Thank you, Father. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we adore you. I speak into that project. It looks as if it's abandoned. Hey, Karusha, you are getting help again. Magarusu Galabaga, you are getting help again. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we exalt you. Lord, we adore you. Lord, we glorify you. And we magnify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Awesome ruler. Hallelujah. Master Savior. Hallelujah. The deliverer. Hallelujah. The restorer. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, pour your blessing upon your children. Thank you, Tana Rock of Ages. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I exalt you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. I open that womb. Yes. 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 Thank you, Father. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I worship you. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Before we go again, I want you to give your offering as the Lord has laid in your heart. 
I want you to give your offering. I want you to give your offering. I want you to give your offering. I want, I know this meeting is supposed to finish 12. We are just one minute or two minutes late. I want you to give your offering as God has given you. You have our details on the screen. So go ahead and give. And as you are giving, the floodgate of heaven open for you in the name of Jesus. The floodgate of heaven, the floodgate of heaven open for you. Give your tithe, give your offering. Give your tithe, give your offering. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless the work of your hand. The Lord increase you on every side. Tomorrow, if you have not registered for a, a church service, which is the actual, please do so. Register, but hear this. If you know you have any symptoms, which I believe you won't have, please stay at home and shield. If you know you are fine, please come in. And when you are coming, remember you have to have your hand sanitizer, though we provide as well, and make sure you come with your, with your word. Can you remind me what you are coming with? With your mask. And as we do that, the Lord will keep protecting and guiding us. Also, I want to say to you, by the special grace of God, our conference start, our women conference start this week. It's starting from Thursday all through to Sunday. I want you to key into it. I want you to invite your friends, invite your family to be part of it. If you have not registered your interest and you are, maybe you are watching us for the first time today, kindly take the telephone number on the screen and register your interest. Call that number, register your interest. And as you do, the Lord will richly bless you. Please register your interest. We have great speakers that will be speaking. It's every area of our life this year that they will be speaking, uh, that will be spoken to. Every area of our life, be it finance, be it whatever, marriage, be it whatever. God is waiting for you. Don't miss it. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. So be part of it and God will bless you. And I also want you to invite people, at least five persons for this conference. The conference is not just for women, men also. There are things that we will learn because up to the time the women keep going for conference and they go back home, there are some things that are not corrected. So please, please, please make sure you join, make sure you invite somebody. It shall be well with you. Again, until I come your way again, I want you to know that Jesus loves you. You are the best and I love you. Keep watching, stay glued to this platform and God richly bless the work of your hand in Jesus' name. Amen.